Thank you very much. The invention number three in D major from Johann Sebastian Bach's Inventions, Simone Dynastine, here in the Geary studio. G major is up next, and you said the D major has a brightness to it. Mm -hmm. What does the G major have? The G major is one of my favorite ones. I think that... Um, I think of it as being very circular, I guess because it's all based on arpeggios, which have a kind of circular nature to them. And also there's a kind of swing to the rhythm that I really like. Uh, it feels always like it's um, kind of looping up. It's, it's um, not driven by the beats. It's always going to some other place and there's a kind of swing to it that I hear in the music. Um, and also I think there's something about it that's so, it's such an easy conversation between the two voices. I really love that. I can really hear how, how they're speaking to each other. It's particularly vocal, this one. This is the invention in G major. It's number 10 in the series. Again, Simona Dynastine here in the Geary Performance Studio. Convention number 10 in G major by J.S. Bach. Simone Dynastine at the piano there. In, in recording the CD, how did you prepare? How do you prepare these pieces? Do you, do you work on each hand separately and then bring them together? Or do you approach it from the standpoint that both hands need to be on the keys right from the beginning? Uh, no, I do, I do hands separately. I do voices separately. Um, so in the symphonias, I do, there's three voices there, so mm -hmm. three voices separately. Uh, I do that with all of my music, actually. I tend to practice hands separately or voices separately. Um, preparing for a recording is a little bit different than preparing for a concert, I think. Um... I, I kind of feel like in recording you can be you can you can really be quite daring, and in concert, of course, you want to be daring, but you also need to account for. You know, you want you want to be solid. You want to you want to not have to have a second shot at, at everything. Um, uh, I mean, of course, I find it quite exciting to hear concerts where people are are really taking risks, and and if they. If they fall sometimes, I, I don't care. I think it's more exciting to hear that. But in recording, you can really try many different things. So when I prepared for this recording, I remember that there were quite a few inventions and symphonias where I had um, a few different points of view about how to play them. And I recorded them in different ways. And then I chose the one that I liked. That, that, you know, that was interesting to do it that way. It's amazing to think that a, a piece that's maybe only 50 seconds long can be interpreted in several different ways. Mm -hmm. You can approach it differently. Yeah, I mean, there's so many ways to play them, and uh, and that's the fun of it, is that you, you can really, um, especially with box music, that it can take so many different directions, and they can all be very interesting. 
you talk in the uh, the CD liner notes about hearing one of the inventions when you were nine years old, and then, as you said, you started to you know to learn some of them. For this CD, as you came back to them, how did your recollection, how did your appreciation of them change, or has it changed? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's changed quite a lot, and one of the most surprising changes for me is that I, I think they're, I think that they're incredibly difficult pieces, <laughs> and I hadn't thought that before. I hadn't thought that even like, you know, a few months before I got ready to prepare for the recording. Um, because, you know, you think of them as children's pieces or students' pieces. And what I realized when I really um, delved into them is that that's just the surface, you know, that that's the first level. Um, there's so much going on in them. And the fact that you can take them down different roads and treat them differently reflects how how um, deep they are because I think the, the the deeper the music the more directions it can take you're going to play the the E major invention what is it that stands out about this piece for you I, I think this is a really inventive um, one where there's so much syncopation to start with. Rhythmically, it's a really interesting um, very uh, invention. And then also, there it's all about um, inversion. So the hands are always going in opposite directions, and at the same time, one hand will be playing on the beat, and the other hand will be playing off of the beat. And, uh, and it switches, it just keeps on switching. And so it's it's like this fun kind of game with prisms or something like that, you know, where you're you're constantly shifting. The light is shifting in this piece, um, and I think about it a lot like jazz. Actually, I th I think that uh, even the way that you can feel the pulse um, can shift. There are parts of the piece where you you feel it very much by the beat, and you feel off off of those beats you feel a syncopation and then there are some parts where it f feels to me like the pulse becomes a whole measure and you feel the syncopation being off of an entire measure so um, I like the fact that you can keep on thinking about it in different ways well here is the uh, invention number six in E major again Simone Dynastine at the piano here in the Geary studio <laughs> 